coming live. We're at the TPC Sawgrass. Uh, we want to give you a quick overview of the, the three finishing holes that we call the gauntlet. So we're starting here at 16 T. It's a 523-yard par 5. Here are the big tee boxes you can see. Um, we've got Celebration Bermuda Grass out here on the tee. We're going to just give a, a really good inside look here uh, at the uh, called the gauntlet. Some, some of the more intimidating finishing holes uh, in all of golf here. So golf just finished for the day, actually. Spectators are kind of clearing out here. We've got a couple hanging around yet, having a few drinks and whatnot. But uh, uh, not really sure what the finish and final score was. We've been out here busting our tail. I, I, I know that... Uh, there was a six under out there posted today. We do have a little bit of inclement weather coming in here, so our crews are out. They're busting their butts trying to get done before this weather comes in. And you know, there definitely is some potential. We'll have to be out uh, doing some repair after the weather as well, possibly tonight or even setting up earlier tomorrow morning. So now we're cruising down number 16 fairway here uh, right now. You can see we've got some spectator walkthroughs on the fairway. The turf gets a little bit beat up from that. Fairways are really, really tight. They're mowed at 0.325 inches. So, um, you know, just above three tenths of an inch. Uh, really, really good density on them. Good color as well. Uh, we're pretty happy with the condition of the, the fairways, the entire golf course actually at this point in time. So, uh, one of the cool things about number 16 here is actually the only hole on the golf course that has trees growing in the middle of the bunker. So we've got two uh, live oak trees up here, really big mature trees that they actually built the bunker around. You can see those up uh, right in front of the camera here. 16, 17, and 18 are all of the greens are actually built on a bulkhead that holds the, the soil from the green up. You can see that here on 16 green. We've got a pot bunker right in the front right of 16 green. A couple pot bunkers on the left-hand side here uh, as well. So there's the tree bunker there. Um, quite a bit of debris from tree leaves, so certainly it's a maintenance challenge to keep that bunker all clean and everything. Look at how deep some of these pot bunkers are. This is actually one of the you know, we have smaller bunkers than this out here, believe it or not. We're going to walk up on the 17 green here pretty quick. But this shows you some of the undulations that we have out here. Some of the intricacies of fly mowing, mowing some of these surrounds out here at the TPC Sawgrass. 16 green is just in fantastic shape. It's mini verde Bermuda grass. Um, 17 green, you'll see as we get up there, you know, it gets a little bit tricky when we're down really low with some of these mowing heights. Mowing height right now, point, point oh. Nine zero, so under a tenth of an inch, get a little bit scalpy. Uh, mechanics do a fantastic job to make sure all these mowers are tuned up, uh, doing real well uh, on the putting surfaces. So you can see here, uh, pretty happy with the condition of the green right now. As most of you would know, Bermuda grass gets a little bit of grain, so we see some grain out here and some of the undulations. You know, a lot of it's based on the way the water's flowing off of some of these greens. You can see a couple of mutations of some of the Bermuda grass in these greens out here as well. You can see them right in front of me here. You know, it's just kind of one of the common things that we see uh, with these hybrid Bermuda grasses. So, um, Mini Verde Bermuda grass is actually a, a hybrid. It's a combination between uh, Cynodon dactylon, which is common Bermuda grass, and Cynodon transvalensis, which is the African Bermuda grass. So we call these grasses the ultra dwarf uh, Bermuda grasses. So see some of these other pot bunkers and stuff out here and, and how deep some of them get so yeah golf channel is actually broadcasting you've got frank Nablo up there um uh uh you know other other golf channel uh commentators up there uh as well you got sky cam here you can see uh we've got the zip line that runs across uh actually the camera is is hanging right there just in front of tree island now tree island pretty significant for us out here um, and actually you can see man the flowers out there look just beautiful right now very consistent with some of the other flowers and the landscaping around number 17 green um, what happens on Saturday night out here the day before Mother's Day is we actually change out uh, all of these flowers Todd Fonda who's the landscape superintendent out here has a crew and what they do is they'll stay you see if everybody sees that marquee over on the right hand sign there uh, past number 17 green. They'll stage all these uh, uh, pink annual flowers out there and they'll load them all onto a boat. boat. 
they'll re be replacing all of those flowers on Tree Island on Saturday night. So uh, over the past couple years, they've really streamlined that line, that process. I do remember being out here, you know, till midnight or 12:30 some nights, changing them out. But uh, now we've got a pretty efficient process to get that done. So. You can see 17 green in the background here. We're gonna swing around, we're gonna hit 17 T box. We're gonna walk up onto the, the island green uh, and have a look at that as well. So uh, just hang with us here. <coughs> Gotta find a spot where we can sneak up under the ropes if we can. We don't go into one of these bunkers. Actually, we'll take the uh, we'll take the player walkway around here. Yeah, so this is where the players walk. This is basically, uh, you know, their walk every time they're walking over to the tee on 17. You get a 17 tee here. You'll see it's a pretty intimidating shot actually with the water surrounding it. It's actually just a little short par three. It's 135 yards, um, you know, but it still can be very challenging. Uh, for a lot of these these players out here. There are quite a few uh, balls that went in the water today, um, and we'll certainly see that uh, as we go through the rest of the tournament here. So I guess it uh, looks like number 17 is playing 137 here uh, from, from, from professional team. So uh, again, same type of Bermuda grass out here. We've got celebration Bermuda grass on number 17 team here uh, as well. So uh, just some uh, agronomy staff doing a fantastic job uh, out here. You can see how straight yeah. some of these lines are and how well they're burned in. Just look at those lines here on the team. They're, they're pointing straight towards the green as well. So uh, we call that a 12 o'clock cut. Um, and that's, uh, you know, if, you're, if you envision the whole, like a clock, so it's a 12 to six uh, cut is basically what that is. So we got a rope here, we got to go under bill. We actually sent out a tweet here this morning. We got some Quail Hollow uh, Tournament Wells Fargo Championship tickets we're giving away. You can see all the pine straw here and some of these flower beds around us. The question for to, to win these four passes for Quail Hollow was how many bales of pine straw go out uh, at, uh, uh, during the Players' Championship. So uh, we'll put uh, the, the answer to that question actually is 45,000 uh, bales of pine straw get put down uh, for the Players' Championship, and actually, believe it or not, all of these bales of pine straw are hand bundled, hand tied, uh, or they're packaged on a truck and shipped up here at the TPC Sawgrass. So, um, just getting up to the walkway here to 17 Green. It is artificial turf. As you see here on the walkway, there's just absolutely no way that you could have any turf survive uh, the walkway up here. So, you can see if you look over in the, the lake here, Got a little bit of blue dye in there. It looks, you know, makes it look quite a bit better on TV, as you can see. Uh, some of the pine straw does fall into the lake periodically, based on some of the wind we get and stuff. So we're out here with nets cleaning that stuff out uh, quite a bit here as well. So one thing that was different, actually, this is the first year they've ever done it, is around 17 Green they had a catwalk. So they put a bridge out over the side of the the green here and what that did is it relieved quite a bit of pressure on the turf here so actually I remember quite uh, uh, you know quite often we used to have to change the turf out uh, on the walkway here before the players championship every year and now you see it's pretty cool there's actually no sod being put up here uh, we used to actually put sod on the green too because that's how much wear this is if you think you know every group of golfers there's four people four people have a caddy I mean there's and everybody wants to come out here and get a picture there are just a ton of uh, uh, we get a ton of foot traffic out on the island green here. So uh, we had a front pin location today out here. <coughs> you can see where that's at. So that's a pretty challenging shot. Most of the guys were playing it up here from what I saw. You can see quite a bit of the ball marks up here too. So, you know, this is a lot safer shot than being down there. Um, so it's a downhill, uh, it's a downhill putt. can be pretty challenging, but uh, there were definitely some shots that got real close here uh, today. So. Uh, matter, now, actually, in 2012, this part of the putting green, because of some of the top dressing sand and what happens over time is, you know, some of these undulations tend to level themselves out a little bit. So what we did was we stripped all the sod off on the front area of the screen, flattened it out. They used to not be able to put a pin location down here because it was just too steep. So we flattened it out, <coughs> excuse me, put all the sod back in the exact same location. Matter of fact, Every piece of sod had a number 
and a flat, a pin flag that was put on it. If we were to take one of those squares of that Bermuda grass sod and flip it 180 degrees around, you would see that square and the change in grain. So every piece of sod that came off of here went back in the exact same spot. Sam, pretty Sam, cool. we have a question here on our live stream. Uh, how strong is the wind right now? <coughs> and what are the speed, what were about the speeds of the greens today? Yeah, great question. The wind is actually stronger than we've seen it here uh, today, but it, it, the wind just picked up over the last half hour. We've got a little cell that's coming in from the northeast. It's heading southwest, so this is as windy as we've seen it here for the week. Um, as far as wind speeds go, you know, we might be 25, 30 mile per hour range right now. Not necessarily on the green itself here, but you can see uh, some of the flags here surrounding the green. Uh, green speeds today were 12, 12 and a half. Um, they're, they're slowly ticking up uh, as, the, as the week goes on here. What we really look for as far as green speeds go is we want to maintain consistency from the morning to the afternoon. So we look for the amount of speed that actually drops off on the greens. <coughs> the pot bunker here on the second It's like two. It's like two passes with your bunker rig. You rake the edge, and you're done. That's how small the the the, uh, the bunker is here on the island green. Uh, you can see the face on the, the the green here. Pretty challenging to maintain, actually. We get some mole crickets up in here, so we battle that and to control that. Um, it's a fly mo challenge as well. <coughs> Excuse me. We've got microphones that are placed down around the bulkhead so you can see them there's one there and actually one behind me here uh, as well so that's where you're getting all your sound during the players championship they're picking it up when the golfers are up on the putting green so it's pretty cool the golf channel spends quite a bit of time installing those so just a small strip of uh, actual rough around the green here uh, we measure that and make sure it's consistently the same distance around the bulkhead um, and you know definitely this this even this short looks like 10 inches of rough here saves quite a few balls from going into the the pond um, that happened last year actually for martin keimer uh, it saved his ball from going to the pond as well so, so we, we have another question here how much blower detail are we doing this evening because of the wind so blower detail honest to god it's the key to everything here uh, we got a lot of pine straw we got a lot of pine trees uh live oak trees a lot of the live oak trees have spanish moss hanging in them as well um, so the Spanish moss you know, can be quite a bit dirty. So we, we, you know, we certainly have 10 backpack blowers on each side that go around and just detail the property out really nice. So that is one of the most important things out here is just trying to get some of the detail aspect related to cleaning up a lot of this debris. So you can see a lot of the stands around 17 Green. This place truly becomes a stadium, uh, especially on Saturday, Sunday of the Players' Championship. All right, we're going to cruise under the stands here. We're going to head over to number 18T, uh, shoot down the fairway as well. Really cool finishing hole. Actually, one of the more challenging holes here at the TPC Sawgrass. Only the agronomy staff gets to do this here. Uh, but we've got a, it's a par four, uh, 462 is what it's playing actually right now. Um, can be challenging to get it, you know, where you want to with your second shot. We've certainly seen some really challenging second shots here uh, over the years. I actually remember, I think it was 2013 or 2012, Kevin Na was actually up on the right hand side uh, of this, the stadium here where they installed these past palums and the roses have been installed over the past couple years. It used to be just one big wall of grass here uh, on the right hand side, but now we've got quite a bit of landscaping up there, um, which makes it look quite a bit better here uh, as well. So cruising down, just getting past the, uh, the red tees here. In 2012, we actually had a gentleman who was uh, volunteering over from the UK who uh, was driving the buffalo blower, went over by the bulkhead to pick something off of the bulkhead. And some of these bulkheads can get a little bit slippery and unfortunately he slipped into the pod, had his cell phone on him and everything. And a scuba diver went and retrieved his cell phone for him. 
uh, after that. But uh, yeah, we got him a new shirt and some new pants pretty quick. Um, so uh, definitely a lot of action, a lot of different kind of stuff that can happen out here. So 18th fairway looks really, really good as well. You can see this, uh, the Bermuda grass out here is really tight. Uh, so if it gets a little bit grainy, I mean, that's just the nature of Bermuda grass. You know, it's it, uh, kind of the way it grows and sometimes it's hard to get out. They're definitely out here vertical these fairways quite a bit. Um, you know, prior to the tournament. It's tough because, uh, you know, in the spring of the year, it's really cold down here. So it's, you, you play, cons you know, very conservative in the spring, building up to this tournament, still knowing that you need to conduct the cultural maintenance practices that are required for, you know, uh, championship Bermuda grass playing surfaces. So it's really a balance that you have to maintain uh, to get these surfaces, you know, right where you want them. This year is, you know, uh, this is the fifth time I've been down here uh, working the tournament actually, and the golf course is in as good as a condition uh, as I've ever seen in some of the putting greens. Uh, wow, number 13 greens better than I've ever seen. Look at some of these moguls over here on the right side of number 18. Some of the uh, intricacies, uh, some of the really cool undulations that Pete Dye has actually designed in this golf course. So if you get stuck over there, it can be a pretty challenging shot. Um, watched Ratif Goosen this afternoon actually uh, chip it off the left-hand side here. He was over on the fringe and the, the pin uh, today was in the back left 18 green here. So uh, he chipped it within about six inches. That was a pretty cool shot to see out here. But uh, you can see some of the slopes out here on 18 green. And we got a couple of rough spots out here. The greens were verticut, you know, about three weeks ago or so. Um, and after that verticut, we had a little bit of a cold snap. So, you know, some of the areas are still healing in just a touch from that verticut. But, uh, you know, verticutting out here is just huge to get these playing surfaces where they want them for the Players' Championship. So I'm really happy with where these surfaces are. Any of these ball marks, any, you know, high, low uh, plugs out here, any weak wear areas, what we actually do is we take uh, some some magic sand, we call it, out here, and we touch them up. And actually, you can see uh, in some of these areas, yeah, where some of these ma this magic sand is. So magic sand, we mix it up, and it's a, a combination of, you know, might be some green, some blacks, a little bit of yellow and, and red different sands in there. Um, and actually, uh, where do we got a patch of it here, uh, Bill? There's not a whole lot out here on 18 green yet. They're, they're going to be touching it up here a little bit uh, more tonight. Uh, we can probably get some, some video on that too, but uh, spent a lot of time trying to match up the perfect color uh, of number, you know, all the ball greens. And it might change, you know, uh, from year to year for sure, depending on those grasses. So, yeah, so anyway, that's an inside look here at the gauntlet. Uh, hopefully some of you are able to join us live out here. This is pretty cool. This is a new tool for us. Um, so I you know, just want to thank Turf Republic for broadcasting this live. Bill Brown, uh, we're doing some great coverage out here. Uh, the Players' Championship. My name is Sam Bauer from the University of Minnesota. Down here volunteering for these guys that come down here and help out every year. So thanks for hanging with us, guys. Uh, really appreciate you staying tuned. Uh, very proud of the agronomy staff out here and what they've done. Uh, the week. It's been a long week. We've got a couple more days ahead of us. They're pumped up. They're ready to go. So uh, we'll catch you in a little bit.